to Celestial Invitational number one. We are on day four, the last group stage, or last day of the group stage, excuse me. I'm D2, with me is Kaldi, and we're excited to bring you the second matchup today, that being Tice versus Kimmy. If you missed the first match, Dog was able to take out Bra Rose three games to two, uh, finally able to clear his Demon Warlock or Demon Handlock, excuse me, at the end there. And uh, pretty excited about this next one, Tice versus Kimmy. Uh, Tice bringing Warrior Priest Mage for this first match, whereas Kimmy has Paladin, Hunter, and Druid, as we see Tice from the Netherlands and Gamers 2 on the screen there. What do you think about this matchup, uh, Kaldi? I think it's going to be interesting. Um, so I think there's no clear favorite. I think to talk about first that the Druid is probably going to have an easy time for Kimmy. As we talk about... It being generally strong against mage, against warrior, and against priest. If Tice is bringing the freeze mage, which is more likely, I would say, as freeze mage is stronger against more classes than tempo mage. Uh, about the paladin as well. Now, paladin would be very weak to both the priest and the mage. So, if, if Kimmy is able to direct the paladin onto the warrior, I think he's doing really well. Uh, and then the hunter is going to be rough against all three. So, I feel like Tice is probably a slight edge. Mm -hmm. right, as just... he. As, as I guess the hunter and the paladin will both be kind of rough. If he is able, to, if Tice is able to win with the warrior, I think Tice will win the series. But if Kimmy is able to get a win with the hunter and the paladin, then he is looking better. But talking about Kimmy's decks here, we see a tracking in the hunter. It's going to be an aggro hunter with a flare. We see also three trapped, which is not standard here in the EU meta game. Uh, we talk about the the uh, paladin. It's going to be a secret paladin, but with two Uldermans and a uh, quartermaster. So. Interesting flip on there, cuts out the, uh, I guess, cuts out the Cockhammer, he cuts out the Lothep, and, and adds in those Quartermasters. So it's going to be stronger against uh, the Control decks, but weaker against the Suit type decks. We'll have to see what Tyson is bringing here. But this looks okay for Kimmy, considering right. the classes he has. Right, right. Um, so, Tice actually has almost the exact same lineup that he brought to BlizzCon, that being that Dragon Priest, uh, the Freeze Mage, and the uh, Patron Warrior. Now, uh, if you guys don't know, players have to play all nine classes throughout the day, so after Tice plays this match, he has to bring three different classes for his next match, and then three different classes for the match after that. So, yeah, like you say, uh, Tice has a pretty anti-aggro lineup, which is what his uh, BlizzCon uh, lineup was centered around. And it's going to be difficult for Kimmy to get, you know, wins with that Hunter in particular. Although Druid might have an okay time, unless it, you know, goes against the Warrior or the Priest. And uh, looks like we might have a bit of a freeze in the stream here, unless Kimmy's just being really, really still. Uh, again, we are piggybacking on the Chinese stream. Thanks again for Celest to Celestial, Team Celestial for allowing us to do this. I'm going to do a quick uh, refresh here. Uh, embarrassing as it is to see behind the scenes a bit. We are streaming on a stream, guys, and uh, just bringing the English cast for you guys. Again, thanks to Temple Storm once more for allowing us to stream on their channel. All right, looks like we're having a bit of issues with connecting to the Chinese stream here. But um... something that can happen, yeah. I mean, we're we're streaming uh, a tournament in another continent. Absolutely, it's so crazy, crazy how international the game has become, and, and how much integration there's been. Chinese, you know, Chinese teams inviting EU players and EU tournaments inviting Chinese players. It's just absolutely fantastic. We're having people from Taiwan come to Europe. We're having people from from America going to China. So couldn't be happier about this. But obviously there are problems. I I know, for example, um, I I coached the team Temp Tempo Storm, and we've had problems. In terms of uh, one player being from China, Eloise, I, I coach one player from from uh, California, hyped, and then Gara from Europe. So three different sleep schedules, three vastly different time zones, and that's just how it is sometimes here. Right. Yeah, and it looks like we're having trouble with the stream itself. It's not really loading too much. I'm gonna do something that I normally don't do, and actually just check another stream to see if other ones are potentially working. Uh, just gonna check this person's stream right here to see if maybe that one uh, is connecting. Uh, maybe it could be my connection uh, that's bugging out here, but uh, right now it looks like, uh, yeah, Tiddlers himself is having issues. Although that could be, it could be my connection as well. Sorry about this, guys. But yeah, to talk about Tyce, this is a guy I've known for a very, very long time. Uh, 
now back in the early beta there were basically there were, there were four players that really stood out and and that was Oskaka in my opinion Thais and Spo I have to also I guess mention Ignite a hero of the uh, <laughs> EU scene at that point we had had Spo we had Thais had Ignite in almost every single uh, single final we had there were so many open tournaments and, and they always seemed to make it back to back I played them in so many finals and semi-finals at that time because you had the invite scene was a lot narrower than it is now generally you had to know our toasters personally and that's just how, how things were right um, so you had yeah. Sorry to cut you off. It looks like we're finally connected to uh, the stream. Uh, could have been my personal issues, and if so, sorry about that, guys. But looks like we had our Darnassus Aspirant played out. It was killed by the Fiery War Axe, and then from there, the uh, Armorsmith was played, which was similarly swiped. And now we have this situation where uh, looks like we're going to get the patrons in here with a Whirlwind and using the Despite here. So uh, kind of how this matchup can go sometimes, uh, typically with the uh, from the time of the nerf, it actually has favored. Uh, it's starting to favor the patron even more than it used to. Yeah, this is a very, very nice scenario. Now, Kimi realizes, okay, my druid is going to be strong against R3, because it's not an acro deck. So I really want to be starting with that, because there's no bad scenario. But Thais outthinks Kimi here. And Thais figures, okay, if Kimi is going to win, he is going to have to beat my warrior with his paladin because my priest and my, my mage both demolished the paladin. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? Okay, he is probably going to start Druid. So I'm going to start the strongest deck against Druid, which is the warrior. The deck that I need to get rid of before I face the paladin. And he also has a strong hand, but we can't, uh, can't rule out how well he's been playing here. Now, a battle race for four is possible. That would be just be devastating here. Yeah, it would be really nice here. And he can even use that uh, Cruel Taskmaster to play on his, uh, well, I guess any one of these Grim Patrons. Looks like he's going to just favor getting more, even more card draw here by uh, using his Cruel Taskmaster on a healthy Grim Patron rather than the 3-2 and possibly throwing that that uh, resulting 5-1 into the Emperor Thorson. So really greedy play here by Tice, favoring that card draw over everything else. And uh, let's see if it pays off for him. He can push no. a decent amount of damage and as uh, also get rid of this uh, Thoros at the same time. Now, what I want to mention is that uh, the reason why he doesn't go for the death spite and and, uh, and uh, battle rage here, the reason is that you care more about the board state than you do about the draw. You'd rather have five patrons and, and an empty hand versus no patrons, you know, and an equal board. That's just how this is. Because if you lose the patron board, then the dude can get back into it. But he can't really deal with this right now and it's looking really really rough for Kimi. Yeah, I want to talk about something since we're in this game where we're in a really dominant position by Tice. Uh we meant we were talking a little bit before about the druid paladin uh pairing and I think Tice realized that if this particular uh set of decks does in fact go against that druid paladin pairing then it will be extremely dominant. Uh, in particular, his uh, Patron Warrior will be able to pick up a win pretty easily against that particular pairing. And then from there, his other two decks can kind of clean up, like you mentioned. So really interesting uh, thought process here, potentially from Tice being able to uh, read any potential decks that could come in from your opponent, even in a situation where uh, they have to play all nine classes. So, I mean, just overall working out really well for Tice here. Yeah, Kimi was kind of caught with his pants down here, having a, a having having two aggro decks versus a complete anti aggro lineup from Thais. Um So the scenario where Kimi is winning is if he is beating the warrior with the paladin, and he's beating the hunter with the uh, he's beating the mage with the hunter. And already, if the warrior has a win here, it, it's it's looking even harder because then he will need to beat the priest with the paladin, which is really really rough but it looks like sadly 
Yeah. I saw that I saw that message yesterday and I believe that is unable to connect back to game. Right. And this is a horrible situation because Ty's well, had this game completely well, won. Well, he had lethal on board, so I think they actually will give the game to Tice uh, if we're going by the rules that you were mentioning earlier. Um or he had lethal in hand, excuse me. He had uh, 14 damage on board plus a death spite. He even had the inner rage, so he had, uh, I believe, 5 damage over lethal. And so I don't really see there being a regame in this situation. Yeah, it wouldn't really be fair. If um, if there is lethal on the board, I definitely support a decision to go for that. Right, so we're, we're going to await a decision here. Obviously, we um, we are getting permission from Team Celestial to be able to cast this in English for you guys, but uh, not completely connected to everything that's going on at the studio. We will uh, be close to Skype uh, in order to get uh, confirmation from the uh, manager of Celestial. But uh, yeah, I would imagine that that would be the ruling, just to give the game to Tice here. Oh yeah, no question. I, I definitely support them in, in making that call. If that is the decision that they will end up going for. It's horrible to have a completely one game, even lethal on board. And, and But I, I think though, if, if there is no lethal on board, they have to regame. And the reason is well, that you can't really be making a call. Uh, if there is no lethal on board, I mean, you can't be judging as an admin one way or the other. And mm -hmm. there was a very famous example that happened at Affinity, where uh, a player from My Insanity Fake, a very, very strong EU player from Germany, was playing against Forsen. And now what happened was that Fake was playing a Control Hunter. And for those of you who don't know Control Hunter, you have, uh, you have Wild Pyre Monsters, you have Akhalats of Pain, you have Hunter's Marks, you have... Gazrilla, Alex Straza, uh, Doctor Boom. You have two Savannas. You run, uh, you run Ragnaros, for example. So there's a lot of late game. I mean, two fake deaths. Uh, or, actually, no fake fake deaths in that one. Uh, you, it's you a different version. You mentioned two Savannas, and my head started spitting for a second. I'm oh, like, wait, two, what? oh, uh, sorry. I I said uh, Savanna. Savannah Hyman, right? <laughs> Savannah <laughs> Hyman. Yeah, it's right, my right, accent. Right. Uh, have a, kind that. of an accent here, but uh, if we talk about that, so the admin saw a scenario where it was control worry versus hunter on turn 12 mm -hmm. and there was a there were three cards in each player's hand and the admin called a win for the warrior but what happened was that there was a Ragnaros on board for the warrior and a Ragnaros in hand for the uh, for the uh, for the hunter and the hunter plays at Ragnaros and disconnects and now Generally, there wasn't Alex Drasa in hand for the warrior, and only a kill command, I believe, for the hunter. But the admin calls a win for the warrior because the admin hadn't seen control hunter before. I don't blame him, you know. Mm -hmm. But what happened was that the French stream didn't lag out, and the French stream saw that the. Uh, oh right, the, I remember this. I remember this right. The yeah. Ragnarok from the hunter hit the Ragnarok from the warrior, and that puts the hunter in a. Demand, a commanding lead, but the hunter was awarded a auto loss. So that's just a scenario why why I think it's important to, if there's no lethal on board, to regame. Mm -hmm. In this case, Tice did have lethal in hand, and hard to see him missing that lethal in the situation. So we do see that Tice was awarded the victory. Uh, we see his warrior was grayed out, so that's going to be cleared. And Tice does take that 1-0 victory. Probably a relief for him uh, hearing that ruling. And for Kimmy, probably going to be okay with that ruling as well. I mean, knowing that he was pretty much dead regardless. And uh, we're going to go into this next game. It's going to be the Dragon Priest versus the Druid. And uh, this basically comes down to the draws. A lot of games do come down to it. Uh, to these draws, obviously, uh, that's very important in Hearthstone. But uh, in particular, this matchup, you really want to get a good start as the Dragon Priest and start pulling your weight around, uh, using your hero power to be able to you know, keep your minions healthy and make it really hard for the Druid to get back into the game. Uh, whereas Druid, if you can use your ramp to kind of take control early on, you can snowball the game and uh, obviously use your combo pieces to finish them out. You know, before we had only a few type of decks that were Sue style. And that was generally just, just, generally just Sue, maybe a little bit Paladin. But now, yeah, we have Secret Paladin, we have uh, Raptor Rogue, for example, we have also the Dragon Priest, and it, it just plays like Sue, so it's actually really strong against the, uh, against the Druid. The Corruptor particularly is strong against the Druid, we have the Guardian being strong, there's a lot of early minions here. 
And but the one thing that uh, Priest always struggles with is the sweater. And now it's an awkward position, honestly, for for Kimmy. What does she do here? I think wild growth is one of the obvious ones, but right. Where I mean, does she go from there? I mean, if 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 there's a valid chosen, there's almost nothing he can do. That's why he's attacking. But yeah, it's just uh, it's really awkward for Kimmy here because he has. He almost has too much ramp. Actually, he does have too much ramp. You don't really want to be having, you know, four pieces in hand, or four pieces overall out of your six cards that you've drawn so far. And um, it's just going to be a really tough decision, or tough situation for Kimmy. And in the end, didn't go for the Innervate Shredder. Instead, wanted to get rid of the uh, Twilight Well. And uh, Tice also had a really interesting turn last turn when he decided to play the Twilight Whelp to get uh, presents onto the board, kind of gambling that he picked up a, a dragon later because now his Twilight Guardian won't be able to be activated, uh, obviously without that dragon in hand. So, what I want to talk about is there was a, a line of play that I saw last turn that Kimmy didn't uh, go for, and I think a, a potential play last turn would have been to innovate out the keeper and silence the Donassus. Now, it gives you the free... Uh, it gives you the free wild growth, because mm -hmm. he did use wild growth, but it also gets your minion on the board. And if you're using an innovate, essentially you get a 2-4 and a wild growth. And what Kimi got was one damage and a wild growth. <clears throat> but he used the innovate anyway, and then on turn 4 now, he could have either gone for sweater or double wild growth. I felt it was a cleaner play, in my opinion. Right. Um, also, he could have uh, cleared one of the minions using that keeper, uh, but also obviously he wouldn't have the uh, mana to play a four mana minion this turn. So just everything kind of difficult here for Kimmy and uh, Tice. Looks like his gamble didn't quite pay off. It didn't get a dragon. Uh, got that light bomb instead and forced to play this Wormless agent, which will get silenced. It looks like and now Bran Bronzebeard is going to hit the dust and fall. Yeah, you do get a double uh, battle cry. And, and if you have Brand Bronze Spirit, generally you would get a, a Druid of the Claw for the Twilight Guardian, but you need a Dragon, so it's either going to be a 2 6 or a 4 6, and there's no in between, even if you have Brand Bronze Spirit. So, uh, decent call though, and Tyus obviously checks first what comes out of the sweater. You know, he has the, the sequencing down. A very methodical player here. We're right. going to be looking at either Azure Drake or Twilight Garden. I'd be very surprised. Wow. He goes for the Azure Drake. I was expecting to see a Twilight Garden there for the beefier minion, but uh, looks like he, he realizes that there's a good chance he's going to be go for this Cabal here, unless Kimmy just sacrifices it uh, in fear of that uh, situation. But yeah, it's yeah. just play by Tyus gambling that he'll have a dragon two turns from now. I think the idea is, okay, Kimmy is almost never going to trade into the Azure Drake, but he might trade into the Twilight Guardian and swipe. So right. I want to just guarantee that I'm going to steal a 2-4. Well played to Tyler. This is obviously a next, honestly, a next level play. A lot of respect to him for that. And Kimmy is actually considering sacrificing his, uh, his Keeper of the Grove, which would be another next level play, and making sure that it doesn't go to his opponent. But uh, just going to take a risk that he doesn't have it. Going to get punished here. Really hard to make that play, honestly. And basically, you're kind of giving up your board, right? Because now the 4-2 Azure Drake can uh, trade into yours. But Yeah, yeah end, I mean, Valence Chosen and SGG, you know. Yeah. Powered Shield and SGG. That's just how, how it goes. Right. So it would have been, you know, next level. But I think it would have been, been the wrong call. We talked about yesterday, Colento went for a play where... Uh, the scenario was, do you play around lethal or not with a tempo mage? And Colento didn't play around, around combo because he couldn't afford to because he was behind. Right, right, right. And he did end up, uh, his opponent did end up having the combo and Colento lost. But I still think it was the correct call even though he lost. But this I think would have been the correct play. But even, I mean it would have worked out better for Kimmy to go for the... Uh, trade into that object, but it would have been the wrong call, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to, to consider that though, even though Kimmy didn't go for the trade, I think it would have been the wrong call, because in the majority of, of, of the time, it would have been better not to. But now, 
the Shrink Master Cabal combo <laughs> yeah. staring I was looking at that one mana off having an amazing combo. Basically, if Tyus had 8 mana here, the game is essentially over. Uh, un unable to go for that. Um, yeah, Kimmy, obviously, like you say, a really tough call. Could have maybe sacrificed the minion. Uh, there were two cards in particular that hadn't been used by Tyus the entire time. The leftmost ones, uh, you know, being that Twilight Guardian and the Cabal that uh, weren't touched the, essentially the entire time. As well as the Light Bomb, which was picked up a little bit later, but, you know, kind of hard to put your opponent on that, especially when they had a play every single turn. So, uh, yeah, just difficult uh, situation overall. And it looks like Tice is not going to uh, hold on to that Shrinkmeister for the Cabal. Just going to value getting more, uh, getting a bigger board onto the field this turn. And he saves two health on his Keeper, saves two health on his Cabal, and gets an extra 3 2 on the board. Pretty solid play overall. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Tice rarely ever misplays. I think. He's, he's probably one of the more solid players you have you, you you do face and always when you you when you play against him in tournament you just you just see things that you generally just don't see on ladder those next level plays that you know really do impress but Kimmy now has, has no no options here sadly I don't know what he can do. Yeah, this is kind of the situation that uh, the Druid finds itself a lot of times against the Dragon Priest. Uh, Dragon Priest just has so many minions that you know, they get buffed by the dragons, they get pretty big, and they're really annoying to deal with, especially for Druid. Druid not known for having that much removal to deal with this kind of uh, board state. And, uh, I mean, notorious for that situation. And uh, that's why they can fall in trouble against decks that can get the tempo on them, like this Dragon Priest, like the Secret Paladin, and uh, like the Tempo Mage as well. That's uh, Those are the decks that, that Druid really struggles with because they are unable to keep up in the beginning, even sometimes with the... Uh, even with those um, temple cards, or excuse me, the ramp cards in hand. Yeah, you generally just need a huge innovate. You need an innovate sweater, I think, is one of the strongest, or innovate through the claw. Something that you can kill the minions, because this type of deck is almost like the Sioux, where you need to have the Dark Cultist stay alive to get the buff from there. You need to have a minion on board to be able to cast the Valorant's Chosen. Um, you need to have a dragon synergy rolling to get those benefits. But if you have an empty board and, and the druid can keep on killing the minions over and over, but it's not over yet. Now this is close to a clear here um, for for Kimmy. He can almost clear, I believe here. Yeah, and I mean, he, I guess what I would like him to do is is leave the. Uh, it's just to leave the dark cultist. I think even even looking at the uh, the the keep of the grove, has something right. to leave. I don't know. Yeah, obviously. Are you more afraid of yeah? Like, he can't clear everything. Hmm. The the difficult part about the situation is the extra health on the Cabal Shadow Priest right now, and yeah, he can throw two guys into that and then use his face on one of the other minions to clear. Uh, and yeah, it looks like he's going to either probably leave the keeper or the Dark Cultist. It's up to him. And uh, yeah, just difficult overall, uh, the situation. Going to go leave the Keeper. Unfortunately, it is going to get buffed by that Dark Cultist and turn into a 2-4. But um, yeah, Ty's interesting play last turn as well. He went for the Cabal, even though he wasn't stealing anything, just so he could do this turn right now, which is to uh, play a 5-cost minion and uh, potentially a f his Twilight Guardian as well if he were to pick up some sort of buff. But without that buff, looks like he's just going to settle for that Dark Cultist. And now Kimmy in a lot of trouble, even if he heals, he can heal one damage out of range. Uh, but now, mm -hmm. he's, now he's giving that up by using this Wild Growth, realizing he needs some, some more help. And, uh, I mean, Druid of the Club would be one of them, uh, but Astrid right. just doesn't cut it. He heals for five now, but he still dies. Yep. Sadly. Um, wait, is there anything that he can get? No, I don't like, think so. Not yeah, even Wrath. I doubt it. Yeah. So there we go. It's going to be game. Tice takes the second game. He's going to go up two games to zero so far. But like we saw in the last series, you know, no lead is safe in this situation. Oftentimes, the third mate, or sorry, the third deck can run to a bit of trouble. Uh, since we saw a dog go up two games to zero and then have to win it in the end in the fifth game. So we'll see if Kimmy can uh, mount a similar comeback in the situation. Absolutely. Um, talk a bit about the Chinese scene. Now we've seen them all be very formally dressed here. So it's something that the EU and NAC need to pick up on. We're kind of getting outclassed here, I feel. <laughs> well, I mean, the players were invited to the 
uh, studio in order to be able to compete there, but obviously, you know, issues with travel and getting visas. So a lot of the players, like Dog and Tice, elected to stay home instead. And, you know, for these players like Kimi and Bra Rose, uh, they're kind of uh, under the radar pros. They were able to qualify for this with very solid play in the qualifiers up to this point. And so for them, you know, it's a big deal and they want to look their best, obviously, going with that attire. And uh, all that aside, we are going to be getting into our third game here with Kimi piloting the combo turret against Tice's freeze mage. Finally, a good matchup for Kimi here. Yeah, I think um, considering the scenario, I think Kimi did go for the right call. It was a bit obvious that the druid would be the strongest deck. So I feel like in the in the mind game, Tice did win the mind game because Tice figured, okay, druid is going to be the strongest. I'm just going to counter the druid. Uh, and and it's been working out for him here. Now Tyson's hand is is mediocre at best. And now what generally Tyson needs to have happen to win is to get a huge uh, doomsayer turn, and generally not have your opponent have a wild growth. So if he only has an innovate, he can overcommit and potentially lose. But yeah, can be nothing game but coin. Uh, Coin living seeds. I think he could just do that next turn, and now he has more information. He probably is expecting this to be freeze mage, and now he has. And now it's overwhelmingly likely that this is going to be freeze mage. Yeah, exactly. And in that situation, you don't want to use the living roots uh, in that particular uh, situation, especially because you're handcuffing yourself for future turns. Uh, he could maybe use it uh, later on, but looks like he's going to like to use the living roots now. Clear that out, and uh, just want, doesn't want to take the extra damage, considering that you know freeze mage will take all the extra damage it can, uh, it can get, uh, especially because a lot of times you might want to use Alex Raza on your own face. Now I want to talk about um, the early stages of freeze mates, and, and people think, oh, they have a lot of burst. I should, you know, savor every health point, but that's not how it works against freeze mates. Freeze mates, you don't care about your health from 30 to 20 because mm -hmm. Alistraza is going to bring it down to 15 anyway. So if you get Alistraza, well, you have 30 life or 28 versus 20, it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So you generally don't care if your opponent gets Mad Scientist or Luke Torre and starts to deal 2 or 4 damage to your face because you can take 10 damage and there'll be no problem at all. Right. Uh, but yeah, this is not only going to be killing the uh, Palace Fed, it's also going to be preventing the next minion to come out and I think there's even some merit to using the Azure Drake here as crazy as it is or possibly the Palliser because you're in such a hurry but yeah I mean what does Tys do now? Ooh, Armor Smith, Armor Smith. Yeah, That's pretty annoying for Tys to deal with obviously not much Wow, the well played coming out from Kimmy there. They're kind of interesting. I wonder what he means by that. Uh, BM, going... yeah. Oof, yeah. It's like, watch out, dude. I'm not out yet. I'm too old down, but still, <laughs> you know, I've got some tricks here left. Uh, the th another thing, though, is the armor does matter. Now, I remember in the beta where Alex Strasser actually did throw out the armor as well. Those were good times, yeah, but those times are over now, and Alex Strasser doesn't destroy all the armor. and so it's a, it's a bit rougher now than it used to be. And if you get armor, then obviously you want to hold on to that armor. And that's what Kimmy is going to be doing here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm um, going to be looking to gain as much armor as possible in this situation. However, he doesn't have... Uh, he's not able to prevent this Acolyte from gaining a lot of cards, even without the hero power. Uh, interesting gamble by Tice not pinging that right away, instead going with the loot hoarder onto the board. And, uh, I mean, yeah, he, he was very likely to get, if he gets swiped or wrathed, then that's perfect. And he doesn't have a wrath or swipe for the Antonada, so the Emperor or the Doomsayer, so that would be a win for Tice. And Tice figures, okay, if he doesn't wrath or swipe or salvage draw, I'm going to get two draws out of this. But now, he can get the third draw. I feel like Kimmy may have wanted to attack with the, uh, with the Arsene Protector before to guarantee that, that, that uh, Tice only gets two draws out of the Acolyte, not the third one. But... Kono Cold seems strong here. Right. This is something that Tice likes to put it in his deck. Uh, I don't believe this is a Reno, uh, a Reno filled uh, mage. So it's just kind of something that Tice likes to stick in there as you know a bit of a tempo card or a, a tech card, excuse me, uh, to provide that extra anti aggro uh, flavor into his deck. Uh, a lot of other players like to put different cards in there. Sometimes more card draw, sometimes more healing, uh, something of that sort. But uh, 
Tice just likes to go for that Kona Cold. And again, not playing the Reno Jackson, so that's not the reason for it. In any case, for this next turn, Tice, un un under a bit of uh, pressure here, can go for the Blizzard to freeze off his opponent's board. Not likely to use the Frost Nova because, honestly, that's a better card than the Blizzard oftentimes because you're able to uh, freeze your opponent's board for pretty cheap. It uh, looks like he's just going to go for the card draw first before he makes any decisions. And uh, honestly, I could see him going for anything here, including more card draw. He is under danger of dying to some sort of combo, but obviously that would require an innervate in the hand of Kimmy. But yeah, it looks like he is going to go for that extra card draw. But uh, can be under danger of overdrawing in this situation if Kimmy wants to force that out of him. So yeah, Tice is on 8 cards right now. So if Kimmy really wanted to, he could make Tice overdraw here. Now, I think there's a potential uh, for this to be a Reno Jackson lock still. Now, generally, you would run two loot horrors oh, or I, two I checked acolytes. the uh, deck earlier when, uh, when they had mm -hmm. on the screen to see if there was Reno Jackson and there wasn't any. Yeah, generally, uh, you'd run two, two fireballs if there was no Reno Jackson. Uh, and you'd be running two acolytes instead of one acolyte, one novice engineer. And we've seen the second acolyte, so it would suggest there's no Reno, but it still would be possible. But if you've seen the deck list, obviously, that's a big thing, but now Kimmy has everything you could ever need, except maybe the Kazan to just finish this off. He even has five armor on top of that, so Tyus realizes that though I have to play greedy, the way I'm going to win this is through a Doomsayer turn into an Antonaris turn. Now he just needed a Doomsayer. If he goes for the Blizzard, it's a losing play, so respect to Tyus for figuring that out. I think, yeah, what he may need to do now is just go for the first Nova, and then he will get some chances to potentially drawn to the Doomsayer. Yeah, the crazy thing about Tice's situation right now is that, say he pings his own Acolyte and then uses Blizzard, uh, from that he might overdraw, uh, ironically, especially because he's he wants to be drawing as many cards as possible right now to get to that Doomsayer that you, you mentioned. So, kind of awkward situation where Tice unable to both unable to draw as many cards as he wants to, and uh, instead going to give this Emperor likely some more draws. Nope, going to take it out with that Frost Bolt. Was wondering if he's going to go for that Mad Scientist instead, but holds it off, realizing how dangerous that Thorson can be. I mean, you, you let that thing go for too many turns, and suddenly you're looking at double double combo, right? With the double Force Nature, double Savage Roar, and that's a lot of damage. The thing is, though, there is a point of no return, uh, definitely with this this type of deck. You know, when you're at around around 10 health, you realize that your opponent is just going to be able to... Uh, well, he doesn't charge the Druid. Yeah, wow. I was bit, yeah, I was very surprised by that as well. There's nothing that can stop you here other than Frost Nova, and uh, obviously the extra 2 health on the uh, Druid of the Claw doesn't really matter in this situation. So I maybe maybe a bit of nerves here. Um, you know, obviously he wants to play more conservative since you know he is the less experienced player. Someone of Tice's caliber obviously wouldn't, uh, mostly wouldn't hesitate to go for the more ballsy play, which is going for uh, you know the charge there. But in Kimmy's situation, maybe playing a bit conservative because this is one of his first lands. Absolutely could be, yeah. Um, it also depends, like, have you been playing against Freeze Mates since the early beta? And that's something that Tyus has been doing. I don't know if you remember, but when, when Alistraza destroyed armor, and when Frostno <laughs> was 2 mana, and right. Blizzard was 5 mana, and Cone of Cold was 3 mana, you play Cone of Cold in Acro Mates, you know, because it was 3 mana, and you just mess up everything. Like a fan, almost, you know. Right. In this case, uh, Tice is going for the very uh, courageous play here, going for the Thorson and the Doomsayer, rather than going for something like a Frost Nova to stop his opponent's board. Realizing he needs to get everything as cheap as possible if he wants to start making waves in the future. It does have the ability, for instance, to play uh, Antonidas, Frost Nova, and Ice Block, or something of that nature in future turns. So I kind of like this play by Tice, really just putting on the aggression now instead of sitting back and letting himself get pummeled. Yeah, Tice is playing to win. He's not playing to lose, or or to lose slower. You know, right. he he realizes, okay, what do I have to do? What type of scenario has to happen for me to win? And he realizes, okay, my opponent is most likely not going to be able to clear both of those minions and lethal me. So then I could possibly go for Antonidas Ice Block on the following turn and get something going. 
Yeah, but yeah, yeah, this is nerve wracking for Kimmy here. Is he going to just go oh, complete? Wow. Pace? I think the lag be... is, here is really hurting him too. Oh no. Oh, oh no. 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 Oh. This is really bad. And then. Oh, jeez. Oh, but he can't. Wow, that is really. Fr that must be so frustrating for him to have to deal with this right now. And uh, I wonder what Tice is thinking right now. He must realize that there was a lot of lag here. In that in that situation, Kimmy, I believe, could have cleared the entire board. He and popped the block. Uh, I, th I, I don't. Uh, I think he could have cleared the doomsayer for sure. But I think the last trend was only four damage. So if he wants to clear the doomsayer and the emperor, he could leave the emperor at one health. But I don't think he would actually want that. I think the only thing he really missed out on here was if he was going to pop the block, he couldn't kill both doomsayer and emperor. But what he missed out on was the wild growth. Right. Yeah, definitely the wild growth. Uh, having that extra mana for the next turn and being able to play that was a big deal. But yeah, like you said, it was a very interesting play by him. He could have uh, gone for uh, the kill on the Doomsayer and just left the, the Thorson up potentially. But, uh, Ooh, tough text to win yeah. here. <laughs> Highest almost wow. had, the, had the game. But I'll, I'll talk about the scenario that Kimmy was in. He was in a scenario where he did get a slight loss from the uh, lag and what players can't do and what I've seen way too many players in tournaments do is have something like that happen and don't do anything and complain after that's something you can't do so in that case what he would need to do is stand up talk to the admins and put the game on the line what you need to do is say okay I, I took a loss this is not fair we, I want to regame or I want I want this but you can't quietly sit and play through the game, check if you win, and then complain if you lose, you know. Right. So there is a lot of, you know, responsibility for the admins, but there's also, the players also have the responsibility to say something, you know, while the game is going on. You can't check if you win and then complain if you lose. Because right. if you are playing, if you're continuing playing your next turn, you are accepting the, uh, the I guess, the disadvantage. Mm. Yeah, you could see him putting his hand up and kind of halfway in between being upset about the situation. So, yeah, like he said, it could, I mean, either play through it or maybe call an admin. But uh, luckily for him, he was able to pick up that Savage Roar and finally pick up the win there. Uh, Tice obviously going with the really risky play of using Alex Jaws on his face, or risking, you know, having his opponent having the extra combo or the combo with the hero power, be it uh, via the Thorson or some sort of innervate play. But. Uh, in the end, yeah, that risky play did not work out for Tice. He is still up two games to one, and he has a couple of favorable matchups left. Though we have seen Secret Paladin defeat Freeze Mage before, if Freeze Mage doesn't get the, the right uh, cards in hand. Yeah, I actually played against uh, Super JJ myself. No, no, against uh, Just Shine yesterday in this matchup, and the scenario that I, I had was... Uh, Getting extremely, extremely lucky. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> uh, mini bot into juggler, into muster, into uh, into sweater, into lothep. That was right. how that worked. And I also needed to get a secret, uh, a mystery challenger, and a consecrate. So when he played the frost nova doomsayer, which is pretty unstoppable for uh, for paladin, the best scenario to get out of that is, is generally through. Uh, yeah, Frost Nova and uh, no, it's, it's through Repentance and Consecrate. And you generally only run one Consecrate and one Repentance. So it's really hard for that all to work out. But there's a lot that needs to come together for Kimmy to have a chance. His hand is not bad though. Yeah, yeah Divine his... Favor is, is really good. But it, it doesn't matter how many cards you have in your hand. If the uh, if the mage can clear with you having... With, with uh, the mage having around 15 to 20 health. If the mage can clear... Uh, and it has 15 to 20 health, there's almost nothing you can do. Right. And uh, interesting play by Kimmy this last turn, uh, hitting the face with the uh, uh, Secret Keeper rather than clearing out that Mad Scientist. Wanting to get as much damage in as possible and also realizing that this Mad Scientist would die to that Noble Sacrifice. But uh, yeah, Kimmy, if he wants to win this game, it's just the hand it's going to take. It, you know, has a lot of power in here. Put, gonna put this muster on the or excuse me, muster for battle on the field right now, and uh, has that Lothip to uh, slow down Tice for a turn, as well as the Divine Favor to refill his hand. And uh, Tice's hand not looking too bad either, has, you know, those, that card draw that you can see. 
But, uh, I mean, you were mentioning earlier that Kimmy does have the Quartermaster, I believe, and the Keeper of Oldemons in his, or the Keepers of Oldemon, however you say that plural, uh, in mm -hmm. his deck. So that might be a big deal going forward if he's able to buff up this board and make it difficult for Tice. I think an even more important thing uh, when talking about the Keepers of Oldemon is uh, you could kill a Doomsayer with that and True Sleeper, which right. you really couldn't uh, do anyway. But, yeah, with these Zoo-style decks, it generally comes down to how fast is the deck and how well does it deal with the Doomsayer. And now, Priest has no counter, generally the Dragon Priest. And the Paladin has very limited counters. Essentially, only few of them run Owl. It's going to be one Owl, and, and most of them run one Consecrate and one Repentance. And that is, but I mean, the Ultimate is a second, second, uh, uh, possibility to kill Doomsayer, but there's no Doomsayer in, in Tyson's hand, so the other scenario is, okay, your opponent just doesn't draw any any, any Doomsayer, and then you can win through that alone, but yeah. Lothip is going to come down here, that's going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, Lothip will guarantee a lot of damage gets through. He's thinking about it right now, uh, what, the one big uh, risk that you take playing Lothib uh, before your turn, your opponent's turn six as a free mage, is that he can just plop down that Thorsten, and it'll just allow him to have good turns in the future as well. And you're not really stopping anything at all uh, in that situation. So we will see what happens here with Kimi, whether he wants to play that Lothib or not. Uh, will again, like we say, it's going to guarantee a lot of damage to the face, but uh, is it going to be enough for Lethal? Because otherwise, Tice is just going to play this Thorsten and help him out in future turns. Yeah, I mean, generally, the Katro isn't even that important for for Kimi. Now, Katro is very important for these combo type of decks, that you have a lot of cheap spells wow. that you can use, and and the uh, the power of, is that your, lethal? of your... Sorry, to cut you off there, is that lethal? Yeah, so that's worries. 8, 10, 13, uh, 13, exact lethal with that True Silver Champion. And Kimi's counting out right now, and I imagine he's not going to miss it this time. This is the perfect situation for him. Typically, you don't get lethal Oof. right in this situation. Nothing for Tyus to do last turn. And uh, you see the expression on Tyus' face, hoping there's no true silver in hand. But, yeah, now he knows the bad news. And even through the slight bit of lag here, Kimi is going to be able to kill Tyus. And that's going to set up a game five, improbably, between these two. Going to be a face hunter versus a mage. Such a crazy series thus far. And now we talked about the Hunter, and the Hunter has the best chance against the Freeze Mage out of the three. This is possible. It's not likely, but it's possible that the Kimmy could pull the reverse all kill here and, and take the series. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one thing I didn't get to mention with the issues at the start of the series was that, I mean, casting Kimmy... Uh, earlier when he was uh, when he was trying to qualify for this event, I thought he played extremely well. I didn't see any sort of misplays for him whatsoever, and uh, that's why I was a bit you know uh, worried for him at the beginning of this series when he was you know had a couple of odd plays here and there. But you know I think he played better in the in the qualifiers up to this event, better than you know players that we've seen in the past, other you know bigger name players like Chao Shen and uh, like Zoro uh, earlier on. He was able to beat No Tomorrow, a BlizzCon qualifier, in the finals of his qualify qualification to get here, uh, as well as Ice Fox, who's another prominent Chinese player. So Kimmy, no slouch. I think he played excellently coming into this tournament, and uh, hope maybe he can uh, make himself look good, make me look good for uh, kind of believing him in here. Yeah, I mean, you can't take anything away from Kimmy. You know, Kimmy is playing like he's top 50 in the world, you know. Tice is kind of playing like he's top five in the world, you know. So I think Kimmy is not was not behind because he misplayed. I think Kimmy was behind because he had the weaker lineup. Right. I think that was the main main thing. So if we talk about his play, it's been it's been really, really good. And but to talk a bit about this matchup here, this is generally favored for the uh favored for the freeze mates. Right. And the reason that is is the ice barrier is so devastating. And especially if he has Reno now, I actually prefer against Phase Hunter alone, I prefer Healbot over Reno. I think Reno is way stronger against the Sue type of decks, where you have the patience to mm. be able to possibly pull that off. But against Phase Hunter, it generally doesn't come down to do you have an answer on turn 8 or 9. It comes down to can you stop the onslaught on turn 2 and 3. Mm. Yeah, something but what like do you think Dooms about the. Uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, something like Doomsayer would be able to stop this right away. Say if Tyus had Doomsayer on turn 2, but now it's a bit too late uh, to do something like that. And like you say, we had uh, Reno Jackson Warlock come out from Fu Oliver on, I believe, day 2. And uh, he got pretty crushed by Hunter because even though he had the Reno Jackson in his hand, it wasn't able to activate, uh, obviously, because he wasn't able to draw the requisite cards to make it work. So, yeah, going to be interesting for Tice in this situation. Again, I don't believe he has Reno Jackson in his deck. But, yeah, I mean, has a tough decision here. You want to play Ice Barrier earlier rather than later. Uh, we do see that the Ice Barrier is in his hand. And the reason why you want to play it earlier than later is because, uh, say you hold off, you decide to get greedy, you play some cards, and your opponent, you know, develops a board and maybe Arcane Golems you in the face or something like that. Then you have to deal with those minions first before you play the Ice Barrier. And then they just get more damage in. And then from there, they can just direct damage you to death. And then all of a sudden, your Ice Barrier is useless. So, interesting to see how quickly Tyus goes with the Ice Barrier in this game. Uh... uh when you're playing Freeze Mage in this matchup, how quickly would you play the Ice Barrier? Um, it, it kind of depends on the follow-up, what you have in your hand. Uh, if you don't really have a follow-up for turn 4, I would go for the Arcade Intellect over Ice Barrier. But if you do have a follow-up on turn 4, I would go, no question, for the Ice Barrier. And I think... Uh, still, I think Tyson Lander plays strong, strong too. If, if the... Uh, if the... Uh, I guess the Blood Mace Talons is left unchecked. You could just forgotten torch this uh, this minion down here. Right. This, uh, yeah. So I, I like his line of play, but you have to have to be very mindful of of the fact that uh, yeah, Ice Barry is just a heal bot mm. for three mana. That's how it plays out. Right. He doesn't trade. Okay, <clears throat> interesting. Yeah, so Kimmy under, obviously, roping till the end there. Really tough decision here. Obviously, every point of damage matters against the Freeze Mage, but uh, again, that Blood Mage Thanos is a huge threat. Like you say, can play the Forgotten Torch to take out this Misha right away. And, um... I think, wow, in that case... Fireball. I Very interesting play here. Wants to be able to be as efficient as possible with his mana, and realizes that his Forgotten Torch can kill basically anything that comes out of a Face Hunter anyway, so... Yeah, going... And now, on turn 5, he can ping and Forgotten Torch, so... I really like this play by Tyus. Yeah, he f figures, okay, I, Forgotten Torch is one less mana, so it's kind of the equivalent of going for... Uh, I don't think you could trade now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> if you don't trade you last turn, now, yeah. yeah. If you don't trade last turn, I think you continue going face. Uh, I don't like this. This is really, you know, arbitrary kind of. But uh, I don't like it when people hover over both and kind of going back and forth. I really like to just sit there and think about all the possibilities of, you know, the repercussions of your actions, whether you go face or hit the Thanos. And uh, sometimes when you're just, you know, hovering back and forth over the face and the mid, you're not really thinking. You're just kind of, you know, arbitrarily doing that. What do you think? Yeah, another thing, you know, you want to plan out your entire turn. He used all the mana and then he thought about how he was going to attack. Right. And, I mean, okay, fine, if, if there's a given thing, you're going to big him onto this Dr. Boom, you know, you can go ahead and do it and then figure out the four mana and make, maybe it makes it easier for you to calculate out everything. But if it's something like this, I think you may want to th think about your entire turn first. Uh, but yeah, I think if the Tyson is thinking, okay, Forgotten Torch, I could use with a hero power. Fireball, I couldn't use with a hero power on turn 5. So I want to go for the Fireball first. I think it's it's the next, it's next really a next level play, and I'm, I'm kind of impressed by that. Right. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's an arbitrary thing that we were talking about, Kimmy, but uh, Tyson under a lot of pressure here, and uh, under so much pressure that he decides he needs to go for the Ice Barrier this turn, recognizing that any more... Uh, of this going on, and he could be in danger of just getting direct damage to death. Uh, we do see in Kimmy's hand that that's not possible at the moment. He has all charge uh, minions that basically charge into the face, and um, you know nothing that essentially uh, just goes straight to the face like a kill command or a quick shot. But uh, yeah, Kimmy gonna be able to k deal with this pretty easily using that uh, hunter's mark. Obviously, you know, unleash the hounds is not gonna get too much value. Uh, rather, uh, it's gonna not going to uh, get any more hounds than one typically in this matchup. And then after that, Kimmy just going to play that Leper Gnome and Hero Power of the Face. Tice under a lot of pressure here. And uh, what do you think he goes for this turn? Kind of feel like he may possibly want to look at Forgotten Dodge and Ping. It's a bit risky, but 
Okay, he's looking into the full clear with a corner call. This is strong too, strong too, yeah. Uh, doesn't leave anything alive now. Yeah, I think Ty is maybe running away with this, but the kill command makes this so dangerous. Exactly, yeah. The, now Tys is down to 9 health with a really annoying minion on the board. No freeze in hand as of yet. And, uh, I mean, it feels really bad to be forced to play this ice block anytime soon. Uh, we do see that Kimmy, if he's able to pick up a beast, he does have lethal the following turn. Either lethal or being able, being able to pop the ice block. So this is an absolutely huge turn uh, for Tice's sake in order to maybe stay alive or maybe go for something greedy here. Yeah, I think Tice kind of here has to figure, okay, I'm not going to be killing the Argent Crusader. Uh, the uh, Horse Rider. Horse Rider, sorry, not, not Crusader. Um, it's kind of been a long time since we've seen that, but this seems interesting. Does he just go for the Frostbolt ping here? I don't mind that. Nine is unlikely when he only has two cards. Wow. But Frostbolt is strong too. Yeah, this is strong. Okay. Obviously, you don't need to ping this this turn. And Argent Squire is probably the worst man you could ever get. <laughs> yeah, we saw a little wince out of the out of Kimmy right there. And um, I don't believe you need to use this kill command right now because you're not putting him on, uh, you're not putting Tice on dying with just the hero power next turn, and you're most likely mm -hmm. going to have uh, enough mana even if you draw something like Quickshot to be able to play everything the following turn. So I like just passing here, and uh, again back to Tice under a ton of pressure. Uh, he he always has the opportunity to play that ice block and prevent lethal, and looks like he's finally going to go for it now. But you know. It's going to be difficult. Going to be able to get that uh, ice barrier as well and make it even more difficult for Kimmy. And mm -hmm. in this situation, even more important actually for Kimmy to draw a beast because then he can just bypass that ice barrier altogether. Now I want to talk about Tice, and he has been playing, in my opinion, perfectly until now. And maybe he's getting a little bit tired or, or something is happening, but he Tice drawing last. That's checking the secret. Like He played his own secret first. Hmm. Which I, I think should have been happening I last. I think what he wanted to do is make sure that he didn't draw the ice barrier out of his deck. So he wanted to make sure that he played the ice block because he didn't want to draw the ice block out of his deck. And then he wanted to uh, get the ice barrier out of his deck so he sacrificed the mad scientist. And then from there he uh, went for the draw so that he wouldn't draw out of his deck and so he could go for something else. So uh, maybe that's what he was thinking about. That could be it, but there's also other cards that would have been playable at that turn. It's it's a, it's a valid point, but it's, it's a very unlikely scenario. If that is, I'll I'll be stunned if that's the what, what he was thinking about. But that'd be very impressive to me. Mm -hmm. All right, so Kimmy under now, a bit of pressure here, and actually very smart of him not to. Wow, Alex draws is an excellent pickup here, and I think you do go for it, uh, Kimmy. With an interesting decision uh, not to hit the face, realizing that just the kill command and the hero power, hero power, excuse me, will pop the ice block without having to even touch the barrier. And uh, looks like Tice is maybe starting to realize this with the non-attack last turn. Might realize that the card in hand is either quick shot or kill command. So I believe he might play around this. Uh, or he, he could save the I Alex Raza for next turn after he's put down all the way to 2 health. I mean, there's also the possibility of just gets one more fireball, he could possibly go aggressive with Alastrosa and, and start to threaten lethal. Right. But, yeah, um, he at least is missing the doom share for the Reno-Jackson combo. He can't play Reno right now, but he obviously doesn't have the Reno, so it's not something you have to be afraid of. Now, is Frostbolt going to come down? Probably not. Yeah, interesting hmm. you mentioned the Reno, because obviously we know that it's not in Tice's deck because we teched, but Kimmy could be afraid of something like that. Uh, we Obviously there's the double Acolyte of Pain, which could make a difference, but, uh, you know, Kimmy, he could be afraid of that situation, so maybe he that could alter his play in the future. Looks like Kimmy's finally going to pop this Ice Block, and uh, I imagine we're going to see an immediate Alex Raza right back up. Uh, one thing that mm -hmm. might have prevented Tice from going for the offense of Alexstrasza is that you wouldn't be able to to uh, attack with Alexstrasza in that situation because you would die to the potential explosive trap. Um, so this game just absolutely back and forth, and still not you know completely decided who will win. This Alexstrasza is going to be huge. We'll essentially heal him for uh, thirteen plus eight. Uh, with that ice barrier, because there's no real way to direct damage him down at this point. Uh, speaking of mm -hmm. Kimmy. 
So yeah, but he'll probably need Alex Trossa, uh, Anton Neidus to get enough damage to right, take him right. down from 26, or just start attacking with the minion. But what if this was a misdirect? Yeah, what? I was thinking that exact same thing. What if this was a misdirection and Tice did eight damage to himself? That would be a game-winning card here for Kimmy. Uh, I don't believe he's hovered over it yet, has he? Don't think so. No. Uh, wait, wait, I think it's. Um, I, I believe he has. Yeah, I think it's an explosive trap. If I remember correctly, it's hard to tell though. But mm -hmm. back in the old days, when uh, hunters didn't have arts and horse riders and didn't have. Uh, Haunted Creepers and Mad Scientists, we ran Arcane, Arcane Shot and Misdirect. <laughs> just, just on the off chance of, yeah, of, of a Leroy. or situations, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> so it looks, no, like, it, it looks like Tice is not afraid of dying anytime soon, uh, even with his explosive trap, even with the extra charge from the bow. Realizes he needs to kill his opponent as quickly as possible since he is on that, you know, clock due to the hero power. Now finally going to get aggressive and imagine it's going to be, yeah, Frostbolt and Ice Lens to the face to prevent that weapon from attacking. And this looks like it's finally going to be going in Tice's favor. This is all but game for him. Spot on, yeah. So Tice, I mean, wow. taking a 3-2 to two wow. second series am, today that has gone to game 5. I am absolutely getting nerd chills. Sorry for uh, to Artosis for using your phrase there, but that was absolutely amazingly played by Tice. Just every decision spot on, you know, being as greedy as he could possibly be in that situation and not playing Ice Block until he absolutely needed it. And in the end, able to finally take that match three games to two. He and Dog are in first place right now, both win winning their matches three games to two. And they are going to be facing each other in the next uh, in the next game after this break, so you guys don't go anywhere. You really want to see this.